The commencement of the First Punic War is inextricably linked with maritime engagements, yet the conflict initially unfolded on Sicilian soil, subsequently extending its theater of operations to encompass Africa. Notably, Sicily's rugged topography posed challenges for the maneuverability of substantial military contingents, with a significant portion of the island's populace residing within fortified urban centers or their immediate vicinity. Consequently, throughout the duration of the conflict, only two significant land battles transpired, primarily revolving around the strategic domination of major urban enclaves. One such pivotal engagement unfolded at Panormus, situated along Sicily's northern coastline, during the pivotal year of 250 BC. In the spring of 254 BC, two newly appointed consuls, Attilius Calatinus and Cornelius Scipio Asina, embarked from Italy towards Messana, commanding two fresh legions and a fleet comprising 220 newly constructed ships. At Masana, they amalgamated their forces with the remnants of the ill-fated fleet that had survived the tempestuous ordeal off Camarina. These survivors, having been nurtured and resupplied by Hiero of Syracuse, eventually made their way to Masana, where they reunited with the consular armies. The contingent of 80 ships that had endured the maritime tumult also merged with the augmented fleet. Upon completion of requisite preparations, the combined naval forces circumnavigated Cape Polorias, traversing the northern coast of Sicily until reaching Cephalodia. Subsequently, the armies advanced towards Drapana, albeit their initial siege endeavors were thwarted by the resolute defense orchestrated by the adept Carthaginian general Carthalo. Despite being at the helm of a considerably diminished force in Sicily, Carthalo skillfully diverted the encroaching Roman armies, recognizing their overwhelming superiority while effectively evading direct confrontation. Following their setbacks at Drapana, the Roman forces re-embarked their troops and navigated towards Panormus, a preeminent Carthaginian urban center known for its expansive wealth and advantageous harbor facilities. Upon anchoring in the harbor, the Romans disembarked their troops, positioning them beneath the city's fortifications, initiating a meticulous investment process. This encompassed the excavation of a circumferential trench, the construction of timbered earthworks, and the erection of fortified bulwarks. Upon the completion of these preparatory measures, the Romans deployed their siege engines, swiftly breaching one of the fortifications closest to the sea with relative ease. Exploiting this breach, they swiftly seized control of the newly accessible outer precincts of the city, exhibiting little leniency towards the inhabitants therein. The swift and decisive nature of the Roman conquest, coupled with their resolute ruthlessness, undoubtedly instilled a sense of trepidation among those within the older city walls, prompting a prompt surrender. Subsequently, a substantial portion of the populace, possessing the means, secured their freedom by procuring it for a stipulated sum per individual. Those unable to meet this demand were consequently subjected to enslavement, highlighting the stark consequences of resistance against Roman military might. It is theorized that Carthalo refrained from attempting to relieve Panormus, unlike his actions at Drapana, potentially due to hindrance caused by a detachment from a Roman consular army strategically positioned to deter such efforts. Regardless of the precise reason, Carthalo seemingly opted for a strategic shift, choosing to direct his attention towards more advantageous targets. Consequently, he swiftly marched southward capturing Agrigentum and subsequently raised the heavily contested city to the ground. Meanwhile, the accomplished Roman consuls stationed at Panormus fortified the city with a formidable garrison, solidifying it as a pivotal Roman stronghold throughout the war's duration. Subsequently, at the conclusion of the campaigning season, these victorious consuls returned to Rome, 
leaving behind a significant Roman presence that continued to exert influence in the region. In the twilight of 252 BC, or the dawn of 251 BC, Carthage dispatched fresh reinforcements to Sicily under the command of Hasdrubal, the son of Hanno, a distinguished Carthaginian general who had previously served alongside Xanthippus during the defeat of Marcus Attilius Regulus. Polybius narrates how Hasdrubal, for two years, despite likely facing numerical inferiority, asserted dominance over the plains, notably the environs surrounding Lilibium and Selinus. It is conceivable that the harrowing tales recounted by survivors of Regulus' catastrophic defeat, detailing encounters with Numidian cavalry and rampaging elephants, instilled a reluctance within the Roman ranks to engage these formidable forces in open combat prompting a strategic shift to higher ground. The Carthaginians, conversely, were disinclined to engage the Romans without the support of their potent cavalry and elephant corps, thus creating a standoff where each faction preferred battle on terrain favorable to their respective strengths. This mirrored the dynamics observed during the Battle of Ades, albeit with roles reversed. The Carthaginians sought confrontation on the plains, while the Romans sought refuge and strategic advantage in elevated terrain. This impasse necessitated a resolution, prompting the Roman Senate to once again turn to maritime endeavors for a strategic breakthrough. In 250 BC, they commenced the construction of a new fleet, albeit of more modest proportions, consisting of an additional 50 ships. Concurrently, two season consuls were appointed, Cornelius Attilius Regulus and Lucius Manlius Volso both possessing prior military experience. However, prior to the arrival of these consuls in Sicily, the strategic landscape underwent a dramatic transformation. News of the partial withdrawal of one of the previous year's consuls, who had returned to Italy with a portion of the Roman forces, coupled with the absence of protection around Panormus, as the remaining consul, Lucius Cecilius Metellus, was occupied with harvesting activities, emboldened Hasdrubal's decision-making. Hasdrubal, encouraged by this news, decided to take advantage of the situation and give battle. He knew that if he did not act now, two new consular armies would be dispatched the following year, giving the Romans a decisive advantage. Confident in his superiority over the Romans, Hasdrubal marched his army from Lilibium to Panormus and camped with his elephants at Orithus Valley. Metellus, seeing the Carthaginians' confidence, made no effort to protect the harvest, which was being systematically ravaged, but instead retreated behind the city walls. Hasdrubal, eager to demonstrate the impotence of Rome's soldiers to her allies, advanced right up to the city wall, taking the bait. Deceived by the apparent timidity displayed by Metellus, Hasdrubal embarked on a bold advance, leading his army through the pass and persisting in the destruction of the surrounding countryside and harvest. However, the strategic positioning was less than ideal, as Hasdrubal found himself compelled to navigate a river to approach the city, severely constraining his maneuverability and complicating potential retreat strategies. Metellus, cognizant of this disadvantageous terrain for Hasdrubal, judiciously held his forces in reserve until the Carthaginians had crossed the river, which flowed into the sea just south of the city. It was then that the primary contingent of Velites was dispatched to engage in harassment tactics against the leading elements of the Carthaginian army as they traversed the river, compelling them to organize into battle formations prematurely. This calculated deployment of skirmishers effectively disrupted the Carthaginian advance and forced them into a defensive stance, exploiting the tactical vulnerabilities presented by the river crossing. Adjacent to the city walls, a defensive trench had been meticulously excavated, strategically positioned as a fallback position for the Velites should they encounter substantial resistance. These skirmishers were specifically instructed to direct their missile attacks towards the vulnerable elephants should the opportunity arise. Meanwhile, within the confines of a gate facing the left flank of the Carthaginian army, Metellus retained his maniples of heavy infantry, 
poised for a potential sortie. Metalus demonstrated astute tactical foresight by maintaining a continuous flow of reinforcements to bolster the skirmishers engaged outside the city. It is plausible that certain maniples were deployed in this capacity, thereby creating a semblance of a cohesive battle line beyond the city walls. Notably, the Carthaginians had yet to confront a concerted opposition encompassing the entirety of the Roman army. Consequently, Hasdrubal became ensnared in an escalating engagement, progressively losing control as his main force inexorably advanced against the thinly dispersed Roman defensive formation. exuding a desire to uphold their esteemed reputation. The crews managing the elephants charged forward with fervor, swiftly breaching the vulnerable ranks of the Roman forces and initiating a pursuit that drove the retreating Romans back towards the protective confines of the city. Concurrently, the Velites adhered to their directives, tactically retreating to the defensive trench while maintaining a relentless barrage of missile fire aimed at the elephants. This barrage continued unabated from the city walls, contributing to the chaotic atmosphere and inflicting wounds that triggered panic among the elephants, ultimately leading to a disorderly stampede back towards their own Carthaginian ranks. In that moment, Metellus, the Roman general, gave the order for the legions to advance without delay and attack the left flank of the outwitted Carthaginians. The Carthaginians were caught off guard and had no choice but to either fight where they stood or flee in total disorder. The ensuing battle was intense, resulting in heavy casualties on both sides. However, it is difficult to determine the exact number of casualties as no reliable figures have been preserved and claims of 20,000 or 30,000 dead in later sources seem implausible. The Romans wisely refrained from pursuing the fleeing Carthaginians and instead focused on rounding up the elephants. Ten of the elephants were successfully captured along with their Indian mahuts. The remaining elephants were collected later by their drivers who had been thrown off during the battle, but had miraculously survived the ensuing butchery. The resounding defeat suffered by the Carthaginians, particularly the loss of their prized elephants, significantly altered the strategic dynamics in favor of the Romans. This victory imbued the Romans with a heightened sense of confidence, enabling them to maneuver more freely across the plains while dissuading the Carthaginians from engaging in direct confrontations. Following the customary practice of Carthaginian leadership after a defeat, Hasdrubal was summoned back to Carthage where he met his fate through execution. In stark contrast, Metellus, the victorious Roman commander at Panormus, was hailed with a triumph in Rome on 7 September 250 BC, during which he proudly paraded with the captured elephants from Panormus, subsequently culminating in their slaughter within the grand venue of Circus Maximus. Hasdrubal's successor, Adhubal, recognizing the untenability of maintaining a garrison at the formidable stronghold of Selinus, opted for the drastic measure of evacuation and destruction of the city. Buoyed by their triumph at Panormus, the Romans embarked on further military ventures, setting their sights on the principal Carthaginian stronghold in Sicily, Lilibium. Under the command of that year's consuls, Gaius Attilius Regulus and Lucius Manlius Volso Longus, a substantial Roman army laid siege to the city. Complementing their ground forces, the Romans had meticulously reconstructed their naval fleet, 
implementing a blockade of Lilibium's harbor with a formidable fleet comprising 200 ships. The city was still held by the Carthaginians when the war ended with a Roman victory nine years later in 241 BC.